Hello listeners, this is Ryan O'Hearn here on the Meat Block Podcast. It is great pleasure to be back on this podcast once again, talking to you all, engaging in conversation with the likes of Travis and David on the Meat Block Podcast platform. Glad to be back. It's been a good winter, a lot of slaughter work for me. We didn't have much of an off season, so I've been busy on the slaughter truck, and I'd love to tell you more about that. It's been, uh, you know, really good, really productive winter. Springtime is here. Today's episode is about knife sharpening. That's right, knife sharpening and knives and knife edges and the language of knife sharpening. I love sharpening knives. I have grown to love sharpening knives. I sharpen my neighbor's knives, my family member's knives, Go over to your house, and uh, it's likely that I'm going to ask if I can sharpen your knives. Um, I sharpen my knives every day at work, uh, and that is due to the fact that we're cutting multiple head every day of different species of animals. So if I'm in the cut and wrap facility, um, we might cut five, six beef a day, something like that. If um, if I'm on the slaughter truck, we we might do about the same. We might kill and dress out five or six beef a day. And then pork, lamb, and goats is also the other species I work with. So we're sharpening every day because of the just that amount of volume requires that we touch up our knives in some shape or form. Now pretty soon we'll get into the details of sharpening versus honing, straightening out the edge of the knife versus grinding off material and... um creating different geometries of edge. But for starters, uh, we're going to kind of ease into this conversation. There's only, talking about knife sharpening only will get us so far. That goes without saying. It's like reading a book about knife sharpening. It'll only get you so far. It's a good way to begin to grasp concepts that you can then apply to the task of sharpening. This is good. Concepts are good. But they are not the final goal. The final goal is to actually practice and gain the skill required to maintain a sharp knife. That is the goal. And that is only accomplished through practice and diligence and repetition. So from here we will we will talk. We will talk about knife sharpening in the hopes that you gain some some basic ideas and concepts that you can apply. Why sharpen a knife? Why maintain a sharp edge? There's two main reasons I can think of. One is that a sharp knife is a safer knife. If your knife is sharp, you won't be exerting as much to push your knife through the material. When we exert excessively to push a knife through material, oftentimes uh, dangerous situations can unfold where the knife may slip and because you're putting so much energy behind the knife, it can it can go strange places. It can cut the person standing next to you. You can stab yourself if you happen to be positioned so that um, the knife is pointed towards yourself. So a, a sharp knife is a safer knife. Secondly, uh, a sharp knife is easier on your body. If you use a knife in your workplace, a sharp knife creates less wear and tear on your joints and your tissues and over time this will lead to a longer safe safer more pain-free career there's a large packing house in my region and carpal tunnel and various uh, overuse injuries were car uh, were causing a lot of l and i Um, costs for the company and um, they started implementing a 
uh, a knife honer person that would walk around the boning facility and would hone everyone's knife just all day long, going from person to person, hone their knife, hand it back to them, hone the next person's knife, hand it back to them all day long. And this minimized carpal tunnel and minimized the L&I costs that were accruing. And this proved to be a very beneficial strategy for the company as a whole. Sharp, sharp knives lead to less workplace injuries and uh, pain-free, less pain associated with cutting. When I first started working with knives, it was hard for me to tell if a knife was sharp or not. That may sound ridiculous, but uh, it takes a lot of attention to the feel of a knife that can only be developed over time for people to really get attuned and sensitive to what is the condition of this knife. To those of us who have worked with knives for a long time, it is obvious uh, if a knife is sharp or not, um, and uh, the different kind of gradations in between dullness and sharpness become very apparent to us and very obvious, so it's a no-brainer. But beginners, they may not know at all. They may be very confused. They may think a knife is sharp when really it's not that sharp, or they may think a knife is dull when really it's probably maybe it's in fine condition. So the first thing I usually teach people is to uh, learn how to feel the edge of their knife with with their fingers. Uh, Murray Carter's a guy, a knife sharpener out of um, he's in the Portland, Oregon area, and he teaches something called the three finger. Uh, test of edge sharpness, I think that's what he calls it. It involves uh, basically feeling the edge of your knife with three of your fingers. And the basic idea is that if you use this exact concept and you feel across the entire knife, you feel the tip of the knife, the middle portion of the knife, and the heel of the knife in the way that he describes in some of his YouTube videos, the basic idea is if you do this thousands of times, you can walk up to any knife um, and based on the muscle memory of what this, what an edge feels like, you can get immediately, you can get a good idea of how sharp a knife is just from this three finger test. And as you do it more, you get more sensitive to it and you begin to understand better. And um, in this way, you don't actually have to take the knife to a material. You don't have to cut through a vegetable to tell if it's sharp. You don't have to cut through meat to tell if it's sharp. You'll know immediately, after you do this thousands of times, this three-finger test, you'll know immediately kind of where this particular knife is on the spectrum of dullness and sharpness. Some people like to pass a knife through um, paper, to get an idea of how sharp it is. Some people like to take the knife to the hair on their arm to get an idea of how sharp it is. All fine. Whatever works for you. Um, I've seen methods. I think Travis actually showed me um, taking the knife and sticking it to your fingernail to get an idea of how sharp it may or may not be. So there's a lot of good tests. The idea is to repeat those same tests with lots and lots of knives and... Um, in that way, you can become sensitive to where exactly on the spectrum a knife is, dullness or sharpness. I would call this learning to read a knife. Learning to read a knife. In the same way that you can learn to read a carcass or you can lead, learn to read body language or there's a million things that over time you can become sensitive to. Um, knives... Same thing, you can go up to a knife, you can look at it six different ways and do some, you know, kind of turn it around in your hand and you can, uh, uh, people who are good at this can get a lot of information about that knife um, from kind of, you know, turning it around in their hand and doing uh, maybe the three finger test or whatever test helps them understand the condition of the knife. This is very important to begin familiarizing yourself with how to read a knife just from picking it up. Very important because what it does is it helps you form a plan. If you don't know where a knife is on the spectrum, then you will not be able to form an effective plan or an effective strategy 
to recover that knife or to improve that knife. No two knives are the same or in the exact same condition, so no two knives will require the exact same strategy necessarily for how to recover them. Once again, I'll mention Murray Carter. Um, I happen to like Murray Carter. If you don't like him, that's fine. There's a lot of knife sharpening gurus out there. I like to listen to as many of them as I can. I like to talk about knife sharpening with all my coworkers and all the inspectors and anybody and just get a general idea of people's different thoughts on the subject. Murray Carter has said some things that are smart. A lot of people say things that are smart. So Murray Carter, this is the last time I'll mention him, but he outlines like seven different steps um, in the process of sharpening. And the first three or four of them are just reading the knife. And frankly, I think that's very intelligent. So he had, he looks at the knife a number of different ways. And just generally the idea is, is the knife bent? Is it crooked? Um, look at that. Blades can get bent any number of ways. And sometimes the bend is very subtle and you may not really realize it until you hold the knife up and look for straightness. If a knife is not straight, you are not going to be able to be very successful sharpening it. So the very first thing you would do is try to correct that bend in the knife and try to straighten that knife out. Um, once you've accomplished straightening the knife out, then you can move forward with the next number of steps. As you continue to read the knife, after you've straightened it out, you're going to look at the profile of the knife. Profile means is it curved? Is it straight? Is it straight? Um, do you want it to be curved? Do you want it to be straight? You can reprofile the knife. You can take a curved knife and you can effectively straighten it a, a certain amount or you can take a straight knife and you can put a little bit of a curve in it. So these are questions that you'll ask yourself as you look at the truth of the knife and you come up with a plan for the how you'd like to improve it or make it different or make it better. So let's say you have straightened out a, a knife that was maybe had a bend in it. So it's straighter now. It's ready to be worked with. You have felt the edge of the knife. So you have an idea that this is a dull knife. And let's say you come up with a goal that you would like to sharpen this knife. You'd like to make it sharper. Okay. The first couple questions you're asking yourself is, why do I want to make it sharp, short, sharper? For what purpose will this knife be used? Once we have identified the purpose this knife will be used for, we can work backwards and then come up with a plan of how to sharpen that knife in such a way that it will be effective for the task and for the purpose that we are requiring of it. Maybe that sounds overly complicated, but let me give you an example. Certain knives I carry, I want to be as sharp as possible, and I will use a very um, low angle, and I will create uh, you know, like uh, as close to a, a shaving sharp um, as possible. Other knives I carry... I will create a, a more obtuse angle on them so that they're not as sharp and they're more durable. A more obtuse angle of a bevel. Bevel is just the edge of the knife or the shape of the edge of the knife. A more obtuse angle will be more durable and will last longer, but it will be generally less sharp, whereas a really acute angle, a really fine angle, will be ultimate sharpness, but it will be not very durable, it'll go dull quicker, and it'll fold over and roll easier and quicker. So I may not want that on certain knives. That may not be desirable. So if I have a knife that I, I'm going to use, and it's gonna, I'm going to be kind of rough with it, and I know that, then I'm going to put a more obtuse angle on there. Whereas if I have another knife in my scabbard, and I'm like, the intention is I will not be rough with that knife. I'm only going to bring it out when I'm 
putting that knife to meat or tissue, and I will really not be on the bone very much with that knife, or if I am on the bone or near bone, I will not be prying with it and such like that, and I won't be rough near the bone. Um, then I will create a more, a very acute and sharper um, style of edge on that particular knife. So I'm working backwards from what is the intention and what is the final goal for that knife, how will that knife be used, and for what task will it be used for. And then I work backwards, and that will help me determine a plan for what I, wanna, uh, uh, what I want to do in my sharpening. To say this another way, I don't want all my knives to be identical. I don't want them to have the identical edge or have the identical length. Uh, I like a variety of knives that are used for different tasks. You can think of this like an axe um, or maybe a cleaver. If, you're, if you have a, a maul that's just used for heavy axe uh, splitting, splitting is the word I was thinking of, um, and I might, and I'm going to be rough with it, and it's only used for splitting, and it might uh, split and come off to the side and maybe hit a piece of rock that's on the ground. I'm going to want a really obtuse angle on there for splitting cleaver you want more obtuse angle on there for example it's like you can use with a chopping effect um whereas like a a a carving like a delicate carving axe or some sort of wood carving tool uh, you might want a more a much more finer angle of edge on there because the task is going to be require more sharpness more delicateness so essentially we're discussing angles and it's my belief that there is no perfect degree of angle. It's all relative. Generally, we're talking between 15 degrees of acuteness and 35, 40 degrees maybe on the much more obtuse side of the spectrum. But even when we talk in degrees... Um, I don't use set uh, set degrees. I don't like using jigs or guides. Um, they can be really useful in the learning process, but there's no replacement for the muscle memory associating with setting angles by hand without the use of a jig or a guide. Um, and let's segue that into actually the really the very first thing I wanted to say about this now that I'm 18 minutes into the conversation is there are many, many, many paths to a sharp edge and there are many, many tools and different techniques and pieces of equipment that you can utilize to get a sharp edge. Uh, I don't nay say anything, even though I just said I don't use jigs and guides. It's a personal preference and I... Even things that I don't like to use, I acknowledge that they are incredibly useful and situationally appropriate. Um, let's let's talk about jigs and guides. Something that you you that sharpens for you, where you lay your knife into um, a sharpener and it creates the angle for you. That's going to get you eighty ninety percent of what you want. And for many, many people out there, that's all they need is to get it to sort of like a 90% um, sharpness that gets you really close. It gets you a good condition of knife edge, and it really does the job, and it's quick. There is nothing wrong with that. I think that is perfect for actually the majority of people. Um, people who want to get that last 10% of sharpness, you're going to have to learn freehand stuff. Uh, and because that'll that'll really start getting you towards the sort of the last ten percent of of improvement on your knife edge that you may not be able to accomplish with um, a machine that's doing the sharpening for you. Um, but I would never nay say any sort of piece of machinery that's sharpening the knife because really for most people that's going to be perfect. Um, any person in the kitchen who doesn't like knife sharpening then I would not recommend freehand sharpening. 
Freehand sharpening, whether it's on a whetstone or on a grinder, freehand sharpening is for people who really enjoy sharpening. And I'm going to put myself in that category. I really enjoy sharpening. So 80 or 90% effectiveness isn't really good enough for me. I kind of want to just like, I want to be sharpening. So I started going down the freehand sharpening uh, route. But, um, but there is no ideal way of doing this. I would recommend trying everything and trying multiple tools and um, see what your preference is. So what is the general recipe? Actually, I want to just talk about the recipe, the formula for knife sharpening because it, it, um, because it's helpful to hear it, even though it's super obvious. But the general formula, the recipe for how to sharpen his knife is that you take a piece of steel, which is uh, a knife, and you then take an abrasive, which is something that is harder than the metal in that knife. Whatever the metal composition, the metallurgy of that knife, whatever it is, you take an abrasive that will scratch that metal, that will remove material, and you scratch the knife. So you can take, you can do this with like cinder, cinder block, you, anything that's harder than the knife can be used to sharpen a knife. Aluminum is not harder. Aluminum is softer, so that's why a lot of scabbards are made out of aluminum. But if the stone or the abrasive is, in fact, harder than the knife, it will scratch away material, and in that way, you can sharpen a knife. So the formula is you take an abrasive to the metal, and you scratch away material. That's it. Abrasive to the metal, scratch away material. That's the formula. Now we're going to get into particulars of that. Step one, you learn how to read the knife, observe the knife. Step two, you learn how to feel with the fingers to become sensitive to the condition, the exact condition of the knife. Um, step three, you learn how to form an effective plan. And a smart goal for that knife. You learn how to put the right kind of edge on the knife for the task you are asking the knife to do. Once you've figured all this stuff out and you have your plan and you figure out what kind of edge you want to put on your knife, then the act of putting the edge on the knife can be thought of as learning how to raise a burr. Now, this is... Uh, another way of saying this is learning how to apex the knife. Um, another way of saying the exact same thing now is basically you learn how to grind equally on both sides of the knife so that the knife reaches an apex. It reaches a pointiness. And when that pointiness is reached and you have an even angle on each side of the knife a wire edge is produced. This is called a burr, or a wire edge. It's a thin piece of material. It's like the crest of a wave that begins to poke up only once the knife reaches an apex. It's called a burr, or a wire edge. And if we are feeling with, with our fingers throughout the knife sharpening process as uh, you're sharpening, you can identify when this burr first begins to form. And this is the, these are the steps. This is the process. You are on your way. Once you have created a burr, effectively, which means you have apexed your knife, the next step is to learn how to remove that burr and how to refine and polish the bevel, which is the knife edge. Okay. So what happens after we remove the burr the burr, this crest of the wave, is effectively blocking the apex, is blocking the knife edge. It's a metal material that's blocking the knife's edge. So once we've removed that burr, then the true apex of the knife is exposed, the true cutting edge of the knife is exposed, 
And then if we learn how to polish and refine this edge, what we're doing is lowering our friction coefficient, which means like you may have an apex, you may have an apex, you may have a really nice edge geometry, but it may be kind of uh, a scratchy, coarse uh, edge geometry. So if we smooth it out, polish and refine the sides of this edge geometry, it'll be smoother and it'll push through the material with less friction. That's called lowering the friction coefficient. And that's why we refine and polish the edge at the end. Everyone has their preference about how polished they like their knives and how refined they like that edge. Some people kind of are all right with that little bit uh, unref unrefined and unpolished knife edge. They don't mind it at all. So it is a personal preference thing. Other people really want to polish uh, with really, really fine grit stones to, um, to further reduce that friction coefficient, and that's their preference. Um, learning your preference is the ultimate goal. Let's backtrack a little bit here and talk about a couple more things I haven't talked about yet, such as honing versus sharpening. Um, perhaps this is maybe just my definition, but it seems to be a common definition of sharpening uh, versus honing. Sharpening would be the removing of metal material. Um grinding and sharpening and creating an edge geometry is accomplished at this stage by removing metal, scratching off material, scratching off metal. That would a lot of people refer to that as sharpening and honing it would can be thought of as straightening. An edge will get um kind of frizzy and then you can straighten it back out and that is accomplished through stealing your knife or honing on a finer finer grit stone um so to take a step back sharpening happens with much less frequency whereas honing occurs ongoing all the time throughout the day you're re-straightening the edge you cut a little bit and then you re-straighten it Cut a little bit more, you re-straighten it again. Cut a little bit more, you re-straighten it again. Maybe you're sharpening once a day, but in a lot of cases it's more like you're removing material and you're sharpening maybe once a week or once a month, all depending on how much you use your knives. Um, the more you sharpen, the more material you remove, and therefore you will uh, wear down your knife you will eventually uh, w sharpen away your knife down to uh, like a pick um, and usually once you've removed an excessive amount of material it's time to now throw away your knife uh, whereas honing accomplished through a very variety of different steels and hones and fine grit hones um, is is something that will not remove material necessarily it is more straightening out an edge that has um, become a little frizzy possibly I did not do a great job of describing those but hopefully you guys get the idea Let's, uh, let's bring this to reality. So butcher truck, I have a couple home. We have a couple hones on the butcher truck all day long. We're honing our knives, honing our knives um, with a steel that hangs off our belts. But we also have like a, um, we have a double-sided stone that we keep in the sink. It's got a coarse side and a fine side. So we'll use the fine side of that to hone our knives a few times, hit it a few times on that sometimes. If we want something a little bit more than our polished steels will do. But that's still in the category of honing. In the cut and wrap facility, we have like three or four different types of steels that we keep on the table. And all of us are kind of grabbing those steels throughout the day. Some of them are a little bit coarser steels and some of them are a little bit finer steels. And it depends on how far go gone your knife is, which steel you'll grab. But this, the general 
idea is exact same. We're trying to straighten out an edge, straighten it out and re-straighten it. And that's going to give us a more maintained edge that's going to prolong the life of our edge and prolong how sharp it stays so we don't have to sharpen it as much. We don't have to go sit by the, at the grinder or at the whetstone or the water stone or the oil stone and remove material and recreate that edge geometry. We don't have to do that as often if we are honing our knives a lot and re-straightening them and re-straightening them. It prolongs the life of it. What technique to use when honing? It doesn't matter. Whatever you're most comfortable with. The main idea is to um, be very consistent. So uh, you'll see guys going super fast and super hard with their honing. Um, most of the older, wiser meat cutters I've worked with go much slower and really concentrate on their honing. And the goal is to be effective. And if we're being sloppy with our honing, then we're not going to be very effective um, at maintaining our knives. Whether you hone your knife towards yourself, away from yourself, towards the table, it doesn't really matter what style or technique or method you use. Once you have a sharp knife, the most important variable in maintaining the sharpness of that knife is op the operator and how they use that knife. Honing is important for prolonging the knife, but even more important than honing is the person using it. Are they using their knife in such a way that maintains a straight sharp edge on the knife are they using it in such a way where they're being rough with the edge of the knife and therefore creating a lot of abuse on that edge of that knife um, even if you're really good at honing and straightening out your knife if you as the operator are are being um, are being rough with the edge of your knife then you're going to upset the sharp condition of the edge of that knife and the more you upset that edge the harder it'll be to regain that edge and hone that edge and re-straighten out that edge um, and essentially what will happen is you'll feel your knife going duller and duller and duller masters people who are really really slick with how they use their knife they're super cognizant of all at all times what's happening with the edge and they're not putting that edge into weird kind of prying in between the joint rough conditions that would upset that edge um, and thereby they're able to maintain the sharpness of their knife for much longer than the people uh, who may not be as proficient at this kind of a skill um, and then they'll also be very sensitive to when they upset the edge a little bit and then they'll immediately hone it and bring it back and these are the type of um, this is the type of um, sensitivity that will allow one meat cutter to maintain a really sharp edge for multiple days or throughout their whole shift or maybe through half their shift to be able to maintain a really sharp edge depending on what kind of work they're doing and how, how much volume they're doing whereas the person standing next to them maybe loses their their edge within five minutes and just struggles to to regain it all day long. That's um, These are the kind of variables that separate people who are able to maintain a really sharp edge from people who are not. Of course, this is a lifetime. This is a, It takes many, many years to get good at this maintaining the edge, but these are the concepts. Sharpening, honing, how much roughness is being uh, exposed to that edge of that knife. These are the concepts. Let's get back to sharpening. Sharpening being the removing material, the scratching of the knife edge, the create the, the edge geometry, creating edge geometry, the bevel, creating the bevel. Okay, so let's dig into that just a little bit. Like I said before, there's many tools you can use, many paths to to apex a knife, to scratch away material and create an edge that you want in your knife. There's many tools and many techniques. Okay, let's talk about three different types of edge geometry, which is edge shape. Three different types. 
uh, concave, convex, and flat. Generally speaking, convex is created through the use of a belt grinder, a flexible belt that a uh, coarse abrasive belt that when you press your knife to it, it gives just a little bit. It has some give to it. And what it'll do is it'll it'll grind a rounded, slightly rounded, what we call convex edge onto your knife. The exact inverse of that, the exact opposite, is concave. Concave is accomplished through a stone wheel. Gives you an idea of what concave is. If you're pressing the edge of your knife up to a stone wheel that is in rotation, there is no give to that wheel. What will happen is it will grind an arc into the edge of your knife, and that is known as a concave edge. It is also known as a hollow grind. Lastly, there's the flat grind, also known as the Scandi grind. Scandi is in Scandinavian, I think. It's called a Scandi grind. A flat grind is neither convex nor concave. It is, um, it is flat. It'd it'd be like if you are using a very straight flat wet stone or water stone or oil stone that is straight and flat, and you are grinding material away from the edge of your knife using uh, that type of stone, a flat stone, and what it'll do is it'll it'll cut a flat, straight grind or bevel into the side of your knife. Now, what's the point of these three different types of grinds? Okay, um, a hollow grind, which is a concave grind, is the sharpest possible grind because you can get the thinnest edge with that concave grind. You can get a very, 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 very thin, thin, thin edge. Okay. But that edge, because of its thinness, is the least durable. All right. So you, yes, you want to shave your face with a hollow grind, with a concave grind, but you don't want to go bananas uh, I don't know. I don't know. Like boning out four quarters, and uh, with that, because uh, the knife edge will go dull quickly. It'll fold over more easily. You can't be rough with it, or else it'll go dull. It'll fold over, roll over. It'll warp. It'll chip much more easily because it's thinner. The opposite of that being the convex is rounded out. It has a, a wider base as it leads up to the point, up to the apex, and that wider base will make it more durable. It'll make it last long. You can be much rougher with it, and it'll maintain its edge because it has. it's not so thin. It's thicker. So that would be convex. Accomplished with a belt grinder. And then lastly, the Scandi grind or the flat grind is a compromise between the two. So it's a very useful all three of them are incredibly useful based on the task that you're asking of it. Now let's talk about the primary edge and the secondary edge. So what can happen is you can put two different types of grinds into your edge. And one of them will be on the primary edge and one will be on the secondary edge. But what is a primary and secondary edge? The primary edge is the edge that you feel. It is the first cutting surface that encounters the material. It is the extreme edge of the knife. That is the primary edge. So, you, so that's the that's where the edge apexes. Okay. Now, directly behind that, closer to the thick part, as the knife thickens and widens out, people will put a shoulder or a secondary edge. They'll grind a secondary edge in there. Um, not everyone does this. Not everyone does this. This is a personal preference thing. But it is possible to grind a secondary edge and then grind on a primary edge on top of that. And you can use two different um, strategies. One strategy for your secondary edge and then another strategy for your primary edge, if so desired. 
Let me give you an example. A lot of the people in the region I work do the prefer the concave grinder, the hollow grind. So they take their knives right off the bat, right out of the box, and they'll hollow grind and half an inch, like a half an inch of secondary edge. They'll use a machine that has two stone wheels and they'll stick the knife in between the two stone wheels and the two stone wheels will grind a concave edge or shoulder into the first half or the first third of the width of that knife. So that's it, it's thinning out the knife. It thins out the edge of the knife using that concave grind. Grinds off, scratches off a whole bunch of material. Okay, so now then they'll walk over to a tri-stone or to some sort of flat coarse or fine abrasive and then they'll hit um, a just slightly more acute or I'm, I'm sorry a slightly more obtuse angle on that um, on that whetstone and that'll be at the primary edge and then on the daily they will redo that primary edge geometry on that flat whetstone so every day, they are retouching and re-wet-stoning uh, the primary edge on their knife, and it's just a, you know a little bit more obtuse of an angle compared to the really acute angle, which is the hollow grind. So if you were to look at that edge through a microscope, you would see a hollow ground secondary edge which is concave, and then you would see a flat ground primary edge. Um, and those are two different bevels that are on the same knife. Same thing, at the primary edge you could walk up to a belt grinder and you could put a convex edge, which is that more rounded, thicker Edge, you could put that at the primary edge, and then behind it, you could put a flat grind secondary edge or a hollow ground secondary edge. Um, a lot of different strategies come into play, especially when you're talking about primary edges and secondary edges. And like I said before, not everyone wants the secondary edge, some people are quite content with just the geometry of the primary edge. And that gets them the sharpness that they prefer. And they're quite happy with that. So let's reiterate. Step one, learn to read the knife. Learn to observe the knife um, effectively. Learn to come up with a plan. Learn to get information uh, on the condition of the knife using your fingers, using your eyes, using the light uh, to reflect it off the knife to get information about it. And then you come up with a plan. The plan needs to be in accord with how the knife will be used and what tasks will be required of it. Once the plan has been made, then you can choose whatever sort of equipment you prefer to accomplish the sharpening, the removing of material, the raising of the burr, the removing of the burr, and then the refining and polishing of that edge. Let's talk equipment very quickly. Um, stones are very popular. People like to use stones. There are uh, generally stones can be thought of as having coarser and finer grits. So you would start potentially with a coarser grit which would be maybe 400 or 500 grit or less or more. But the idea is that the coarser the grit the lower number that that grit is, the more material it will remove quicker. So if you had like a 100 grit, you can remove more material. It's scratchier. It's coarser. You can remove more material quicker compared to an 1,000 grit, okay, which is going to take you much longer. You can still remove material, but it's going to take you much longer to remove the same amount of material. So if you want to remove material quickly, if you want to move, remove metal material from the edge quickly, you're going to use a coarser grit. 
Some people use water. Some people prefer to use oil. Some people like to use a little Windex or a little soap on there with the water. Um, try all of them. Try all of them um, and see what you prefer. I am not a fan of oil. I prefer water, but I still use, I basically use everything. On the truck, we have a few different types of sharpeners. I use them all. In the shop, we have a few different kinds of sharpeners. I use them all. When I use stones, water stones or oil stones, I know that I will be accomplishing a flat grind. I will be accomplishing a scandy grind. All right. Whereas if I give my knives to my coworker who has a hollow grinder, I know he's going to grind a concave edge into my knife. Um, the uh, I also know that I have a piece of equipment, which is a belt grinder. I know that if I use my belt grinder, then I'm going to produce some amount of concaveness on the edge. Uh, so uh, I like all of these different ways of creating edge geometry at different times. Over time, I've gravitated more and more to the belt grinder because of its ease of use. I figure I would include this little piece because um, I imagine people might be curious um, what I use the most these days. Maybe you're not curious, but I'll tell you anyway. I used this uh, WorkSharp belt grinder. Um, it is an affordable purchase. Um, it's the WorkSharp Ken Onion Edition. I learned about it from my friend Andrew Turner, who's been using it for years, very effectively. And he got he recommended getting the um, belt grinder attachment, and I would second that recommendation on the Kenyan WorkSharp model with the belt grinder attachment. The belt grinder attachment allows you to freehand um, belt grind sharpen. So uh, instead of using the uh, angles that are are created by the device, the belt grinder allows you to do a freehand version of that. And to me, that was the ideal conditions I was looking for in a belt grinder. Other people might not prefer the freehand version. They would prefer the set angle version. And so there are those models also. I like the... Um, I like the convex edge that the belt grinder puts on my knife, but even more so, I like the quickness of the machinery, which is a belt grinder. Uh, and the time factor became a big deal for me as the years went on. Uh, it's just the the truth is I can I can get my knives into the condition I want to get them quicker using this uh, belt grinder compared to uh, water stones and oil stones, which I still love dearly, but the time component uh, became a big factor for me as someone who works in a production cutting facility. Because my, my knives go dull uh, quicker because of the volume that we're cutting. So I, uh, I sharpen probably once a week, and I hone on the daily sometimes honing more uh, aggressively than other times. Anyway, I might wrap things up there. Uh, like I said, this is a, you know, a discussion about knife sharpening. This is um, the language of knife sharpening. This is a uh, discussion of concepts. And, and it is certainly good to, uh, to understand concepts. It can only help and to kind of establish some common language so you can talk about it more effectively with other people who are sharpening. But, but of course, sharpening is sharpening. It's not talking about sharpening. Sharpening is actually knife in hand, uh, doing this stuff over and over, and um, that is the way that uh, you'll, you'll get somewhere. But um, like I said, I love... I've learned to, I've kind of grown to to love sharpening and really enjoy sharpening. And um, if you like talking about it and you uh, 
are curious about it and if this any of this has been helpful to you or if it's been confusing to you you know hit me up and we can keep talking about it i could try to uh, provide more clarity um knife sharpening is one of those things so as soon as you start talking about it, it it can get pretty confusing pretty quick so i apologize if i confuse anybody and um i hopefully will uh hopefully we'll learn to you know talk about this more effectively as time goes on all right be well everybody and hit me up on instagram if you um want to chat about this stuff at gather and break and shout out to david and travis and uh yeah hopefully i will be um starting to uh to put more material onto this podcast again because it was all it was so much fun for me to do so for previous episodes and i look forward to um putting more material out there all right everybody be well